Hey, I'm up here with my dog Beam, San Quinn Canyon. We're not just up this beautiful canyon. I'm up here finding some really cool rocks up here. But one thing to, that I like to do, and I, I don't know if you can see this, is I try to get my elevations and figure out when I'm finding rocks in a certain area and they're a certain type of uh, jasper or agate or maybe even that morganite stuff that I find. I like to look down, and I'm at about 6,000 feet, so you know where I'm at. 39, yeah, we're just up Santa Quinn. I could probably post the coordinates, but you might be able to see them from there. Maybe I can get in a spot where you can see them. But yeah, we're just hiking around. We want to show people what it is to, to get up in the mountains and enjoy these mountains. If you're this close to mountains and you want to look for rocks, you'd be surprised what you see. You know, I'm like, anytime I stop, I like to look around and see what there is. You know, and this little thing kind of caught my eye, but it's, I mean, it's cool. But, I mean, yeah, nothing worth money. I like things that are heavy and transparent. You know, and I take them back and I cut them into like a little quarter inch slab. But, yeah, we're up here rock counting. Today is May 16th, 2024. So, this stuff's pretty cool, too. It's a, it's a banded jasper. Uh, not transparent or translucent or any of that. Um... You know, if it was a bigger piece, I'd probably keep it. I mean, it'd polish up as a small rock, but I like cutting them into slabs and then turning them into like a scene of some type and then putting them in a cabochon or in a ring. Now, hiking this is not for the faint-hearted. This is a steep canyon. I trade out my tall hiking boots every day. Because as a runner, I wear, I'm a marathoner. I marathoned for years, and uh, I never ran in the same pair of shoes every day. You got to let them relax and come back, and so I switch them out. So that's another thing. But man, if you like being in the mountains and you just want to connect with God, and I do, I need to connect with God. Boy, today, these couple of days, they've been rough. But you know what made my day is that little four-year-old granddaughter of mine lily she was out here you have to go back and look at some of the videos i'm gonna maybe i'll put it in there i might not have posted i was a little worried about getting but she's this little four-year-old she's already talking to her dad about going with grandpa mountain uh, yeah rock counting on the mountain she was making up songs and i videoed her oh it was fun and cute take your family with you when you go to the mountains you hear that river down there there's nothing here obviously though occasionally people are here but in utah it's not too bad guy way down there didn't even know he's there when i pulled up here yeah i'm kind of getting into a rhyolite looking stuff this gray rock and i know there's pockets of crystals in some of this stuff but but that's out towards topaz mountain i hear they got a really good but you know we're not that far from topaz mountain you know we're Oh, just Santa Quin, Utah, just above here. I'm, I'm about 6,000 feet. Just walking across the top here, just seeing what I can find. And So far, no pink morganite. But I found some interesting stuff. You'll have to check it out. It's the best part of rock hounding. Being in the mountains, you know. All that water coming down. You can hear the rivers coming down through here. They're running pretty good right now. Probably washing all kinds of sediments. What's interesting is that formation over there. See how that fault shows up right there? I've always been told that was a fault line, and that might be an interesting area to deal with rock county if I can get over the river. Might have to go for a July day when it's stopped running as high. I hope I can find that piece I was telling you about. It's not, not often you find a eight by eight square looking rock. It looks like a sponge and weighs about 25 pounds. Oh, there it is, right down there. We're gonna get right down to it. I decided not to haul all them 30 pound rocks. When you find a 30 pound rock and you're going uphill, you're not quite done rock hounding, find a place to hide it, mark it, mark it on your GPS. You know, this is where we're at, guys. This is, uh, one way to do it. I know it's hard to read, but let's see if we can get you a better view. It's hard for me to turn my... Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Hey, look at that works. 
we're down here, Santa Quin Canyon, and I found this really, really cool rock. I've been all over this mountain for about, uh, probably going on 60, 70 days. And that rock right there is the first one I've seen. Seen some similar bubbly looking stuff. Doesn't that look soft? No, I mean, really. And then I found this one up here. This one's kind of cool. Anytime something's green, I pick it up. And if it's heavy, I pick it up and keep it. And if it's heavy and transparent, and I add some water I put on there, then, then you know it's worth hauling off the mountain. Some things are just nice to be in the rock garden, but others are nice to make into cabochons and rings. And this will be interesting to cut. Yeah, anytime I'm up here, I try to do things for the environment. And these weeds have, as long as I've known, been the ones you want to get rid of if, if they're in your property because they are nasty so i don't know it'll probably come back but it's going to be slowed down but... while i gradually make it off of this not a not a super steep hill but look how beautiful that is up there whoa it's a beautiful time of year other than the pollen, yeah, the pollen's a little bit heavy, but, but you know, as I walk around on these hills, I look for things that stand out, shine, and then if they stand out and shine and they're heavy, I take them home. Because density of an object makes it heavy. I mean, I'd be interested in like picking up a, you know, a, a, a diamond the way that was about one inch square maybe just a rough diamond just to see how heavy that is but yeah these rocks that I'm finding up here they're heavy and on the most scale they're about an eight some are a little less and I've noticed as I've cut them and you'll have to look at some of my videos or other I'll, I'll throw some pictures in there but as I've cut them some of them fall apart, and that means that they just ain't good for cabochons. But the ones that don't, that polish up nice, you know, they'll make good presents for grandchildren. We've got 19 of them. And there's nothing better than family to get up here with you, because they got good eyes. They can find more stuff than I can. But another day. Happy, happy days. So another thing I do is I look for things that stand out. So there's a little glittery rock down there. And then this one caught me. And the reason why it caught me is because there was some red in it. And, you know, it's kind of a coral looking stuff. Um, you know, it's not a very big piece, but, but I'll maybe polish it up and see what it looks like. The better piece, as I stand here, is this one. That one's a good piece. Not as big as I'd like. But you can tell that that's transparent. You know, as I cut this, hopefully it won't fall apart. Feels heavy too. But this is what I find up here. So I like telling stories. And one of my favorite stories is I had a grandpa, and I'm going to get this song. Uh, it's called Yuba Dam. And so this grandpa, he decides, you know, because I have all my grandpas, they're all kind of like a little bit wild. Might not come home on Friday, you know what I mean? That's My dad was kind of like that. I was kind of like that. In fact, a lot of people are like that. Not that there's a problem with that. But this grandpa went to Yuba Dam. Oh, yeah, that's right, Yuba Dam. And apparently his wife didn't know... Did not know there was even such a thing. So as he walks in the house after a long weekend of drunkenness and carousing, she asked him, where you been? He said, you be damn. Oh, she got mad. She started throwing things. And then he's like, what, what? And she's like, where the hell you been? Because we don't mince words. You be damn. Oh, man. She was packing my stuff up. Throwing things out and going for the gun. Boy, I took off and started running. That's kind of the way the story goes. I need the whole thing. But stay tuned. 
Occasionally you see rocks that just just stand out. It's kind of a pretty one. But pretty doesn't always cut it. I like pretty, transparent, and hard. So as I maneuver down this kind of a rock slide, you know the nice thing about being up here, everything changes every year. I mean snow levels you know bring more rocks down they uncover things and this year i found some really nice rocks and they're starting to polish up nice uh, i'll have to start displaying some of the pictures that i do because that might be kind of fun but i'm a zipline expert i'm up in the mountains looking for a place to put another zipline and wouldn't that be fun zipline all the way from up in there will helicopter you in and you zipline from one spot to the other Huh? Oh yeah, we can do it. We have zip lines that, it, my technology is literally on St. Martin's zip line, which is a 42 degree slope. Now, we're pretty steep here, but wouldn't that be fun? Oh, by the way, uh, Troy Richardson here, Momentum Engineering, we're at zipsafe.org, zip line breaking solutions. We're just up here clearing our head. Got a report to do tomorrow. It's on a, another trampoline court accident. Yeah, I do both of them. And I've got this big hat that I keep the sun off. But, uh, yeah, we're trying to do everything we can to change the, the industry. And I'm working with Dr. John Skidmore.